mother, there is no other like mother, so treat her right. Mother, I always love her, my mother, so treat her right, treat her right. M is for the moments and the message she teach, and O is for the awesome men and meals we eat. T is for the time that she spends with us, and H is for the hugs that she gives us with love. E's for every time I put her love to the test, and R's for the reward that in heaven she'll get. Be thankful for your mama and your grandmama too, and every woman in your life that falls into you. Here at True North, we just love our mamas, our grandmamas, our spiritual mamas, all the mamas. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad you tuned in. You can use the number at the bottom of the screen to let us know you're watching for more information and any prayer requests you may have. You can also visit us online at truenorthak.org. Do you all please stand to your feet with us while we worship our Lord today?
You 
are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your
bring it all to peace the storm surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every way at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. Darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Sing it again. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble.
Father God, thank you for being the God that you are. Hi friends, my name is Mark and I'm one of the pastors here at True North Church. And I want to say thank you for joining us today for our broadcast. I hope that the worship just that was just on was a blessing to you. I hope the message speaks to your heart. Our, our prayer is that you're encouraged with this. And I want to encourage you, if you're watching and you consistently watch and you want to make sure this broadcast is online, would you consider giving toward it? Would you partner with us? We'd love for you to do that. True North Church is an irrationally generous church. We truly believe we're more blessed to give than receive. I hope you enjoy the message that's following. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Well, good morning. How's everyone doing? Man, isn't it great to have sunshine outside? How many of you guys like the little dusting of snow this week? Never mind. All right. Man, I can't get you to cheer for everything, right? Hey, we live stream our second gathering uh, for those who want to watch online and for uh, in the correctional facilities across the state of Alaska. Would you give it up for those watching online today and let them know we're so glad they're here. I was just in Anchorage and uh, a part of uh, the network conference for the Assemblies of God and there's a missionary that's been uh, working with correctional facilities for 50 years. And uh, he came up to me and he says, Mark, he said, we're going to pick up your broadcast at Anchorage. And so we're going to be at ACC, which is like FCC, but Anchorage Correctional Facility on a weekly basis uh, uh, with church. And so we're pumped about that. Hey, a couple quick announcements. I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, one of our former parishioners, her and her husband, her husband, uh, Pastor Bo, was on staff here for a season with us. Was just, Karen Moline was just hired as the interim superintendent for the Fairbanks North Star School District. And so we're super excited about that. And, and so Karen and, and Bo will be moving back to Fairbanks. They just sold their house last spring and they're like, why did we sell our house? And, uh, and so, uh, hey, we're, we're in a series. My name's Mark, I'm one of the pastors here. We're in a series called It's Complicated. And you might be going, why, why is there a television screen up here? Because we're gonna get to where, uh, oh, they are, do- they are doing a Heidi. So uh, we need to raise up more people in our broadcast ministry here because in the reality, next August 22nd, that's like four months away, we're launching a second campus on College Road. We are at College Road campus. Uh, October 1st, have an have, uh, intense meeting tomorrow with our architects. August uh, 2nd, uh, we, or August 1st, we'll, we'll have full construction drawings. That's our goal uh, for a 30,000 square foot worship center on College Road to be added to where the campus is there. So we're super excited about that. So pray with us. But on the 22nd of August, we uh, will be launching a second campus there. Pastor Matt and Jan, Jennifer's our youth pastor. Matt's one of our associate pastors. They are with us. They're just gonna go over there and be with us over there on that campus, help us plant it. And we're believing for 100 plus of you folks in our five gatherings to say yes to go plant. And so... Uh, uh, there'll be some information, uh, there'll be some uh, uh, kind of introduction type, there'll be some uh, interest meetings here short in the next couple of weeks as we get ready for, for that. They're laying flooring in some of the rooms over there this week, and uh, we're going to have an incredible worship center over there. Uh, so in some of you, God's going to launch to send over there. We're going to kick some of you out Amen. in a good way, kick you out with a blessing to go over there to that side of town and... Uh, uh, began to start a plant over there, which the two, then the two campuses will combine, hopefully Easter of 2023, as we worship together in a larger sanctuary that can fit more, uh, fit more people, because we keep inviting our friends. We started the fourth gathering, so this wouldn't be full, but look around, okay? So y'all, y'all are doing a good job inviting your friends, um, but we want to make sure you can keep inviting your friends, okay? Uh, we're in a series called It's Complicated, and today... I'm talking about money. Say money. money. And see, so like he's talking about, but the church talks about money. I, you know, I, I, the three greatest, three top reasons people get divorced is number one, incompatibility, um, which, which is unique because the plumbing does, never mind. Um, infidelity. In other words, we'll talk about adultery. Next week's Mother's Day. We're going to put that off to the week after Mother's Day. <laughs> Thought that would be appropriate. Um, and, and, yeah. Uh, but and the, other, the, the, the third reason people get divorced is money issues. We talk about money. So today we're talking about money, and, and, uh, and I, I think I want to give you what I would call some of the greatest biblical relational advice um, and guidance when it comes. And again, one of our big thoughts is the one who defined our relationship, or the one who designed us should define the areas of our life. So we're talking about uh, uh, money today, and, and, and I think here, here's, a, here's a powerful verse in Haggai. 
uh, the prophet writes, now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You've planted much, but you've harvested little. In other words, give careful ways because if, you've, if, you plant in, if you keep planting and there's no harvest, and then he goes on, if you eat, but you've never had enough, if you drink, but you never have your fill, if you put your clothes on and they're not warm, well, <laughs> they, did, they didn't take into Fairbanks, okay? Um, but you earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes. In other words, if you never quite have enough, Hey, guys, saying, uh, uh, this is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. In other words, let's rethink what you're thinking. Rethink what you're doing. If what you're doing in the area, and it's talking about, he's talking about finance here. If there's never enough, let's, let's, let's give careful thought to our ways. Let's, let's rethink this. Now, I actually, I've had friends that go, Mark, I hate talking about money in church. I'm thinking, I, I like talking about money because it's not mine. And when I say that, I feel like I'm super blessed. My dad uh, is, a, is a dairy farmer. In fact, my dad, my dad started a hobby chicken farm the other day. I mean, like, literally, a hobby chicken farm and, and got blessed on it, just sold it for uh, you know, almost a half a million dollars for his chicken farm, just sold it. He's at 75 and just sold a business that he started as a hobby for half a million dollars. My dad's a b- incredible, everything he touches turns to gold. And my dad, when I was six, I had my first time certificate, earning interest. I learned about investments. I learned about, and I remember one of the things my dad always said was Mark uh, Boys, and he'd write his tithe check out in front of us as kids. That was back when we had checks. Some of you are like, I still have it. Well, some of the younger people are like, what's a check? Um, but my dad taught about this, and I remember one time, it was in the 1980s, the dairy farming industry was very difficult in Tillamook, Oregon. They were paying farmers not to milk. It was this whole government buyout, and my dad said, I'm not gonna have you pay me not to milk. I, was, I have cows, cows milk. Um, and so, but things were tight, and I remember my dad's friend calling, saying, and his name was Chuck. I remember this conversation. We're in the kitchen. We're eating an incredible dinner. This guy calls. My dad answers the phone, and he goes, hey, Chuck, how you doing? And he goes, Chuck, you can't afford not to tithe. Chuck, you got to tithe. And then he hangs the phone up. But I remember that. And, and when I say that, I mean, I went to college. I, I I gave up a dozen full ride scholarships, Division I scholarships to run track and cross country at Division I schools that I paid for my way through Bible college. I graduated debt free. I had, still had $10,000 on the bank when I was done. I actually took government loans because they'd give loans for school and I qualified for some of those loans. I took the money, put them in time certificates for four years and, and then I paid it off and kept the interest. Um, and why do I say that? I feel like finances, there's been a blessing on my, on my dad's life, and I, believe, I think there's been a blessing on our, my life and our marriage uh, in the area of finances. So I, I, I don't come to you and go, well, I'm kind of scared to talk about this. Maybe it works. I know it works. I'm convinced it works. And, and so today I want to talk about this, uh, uh, and, and I want to talk about, see, see, the Bible talks about money a lot. In fact, I want to just walk through this. Now, Jesus talked about money twice as much as heaven or hell. How many know heaven's real? How many know hell's real? Some of your friends, no. Um, 16 of the 38 parables that Jesus had to do with money, possessions. 16 of 38. In fact, it's interesting. Um, there are over 500 verses about prayer and faith. Now, how, how many think prayer is important? How many think faith is a pretty big deal? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. 500 verses in the Bible on prayer and faith, and yet there's 2,000 verses in the Bible on money and possessions. And you might say, well, why is that the case? Because money, friends, look at me. Money is not a practical deal. Money's a spiritual deal. It is. It, it, it's, it, money, money is a spiritual issue, not a practical issue. Paying your bills is not, now practically, yeah, they're going to come and foreclose on your house. They'll take away your car if you don't pay your bills. Practically. But I'm talking about a spiritual thing that overarchs the practical thing called paying your bills. Why do I say that? Because Jesus says this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Money is a heart issue, not 
a, a, you see, is where your treasure is. That's where your, where your wallet is. There's, there's a nerve that's connected between your wallet and your heart. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And if you're married, you know what your wife wants? She wants your whole heart. Am I right? Ladies, that's a good time to say amen real loud. I didn't know it was in one of, the kind of those kind of churches. Well, you should have figured it out. No. Um, your, your kids want your heart. But, but, but where your treasures, what you value, that's where your heart's going to be. And, and, and when you get it wrong, friends, when you get it wrong, it gets complicated. That's why we're talking about it, is when you get it wrong, it gets real complicated. So today, I, I, I want to read a verse. And Bill, in fact, Billy Graham said this. Billy Graham said, if a person gets their attitude toward money straight, it will help straighten out almost every other area of their life. Because where your treasure is, where your heart is. If you get that right, things work. So I, I want to look at this thought. Um, you know, money is spiritual. We must know. In fact, in fact, Jesus says in Luke chapter, uh, or, why is money so complicated? Luke's, Luke chapter 16 says this, no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, that word mammon, we're not like, where's, what's mammon? Well, mammon, mammon is an Aramaic translation for money, but, but more than that, it was the name of the Syrian god of riches. And, you know, if you're in Israel and, and you're an Israelite, you understood there's Assyria, there's Babylonia, there's these people you battled against, and, 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 and there's this, and, and I, what, what, what Jesus is saying is there is a spiritual issue here. There's God who's spiritual and there's mammon. There's the God of riches. There, there's a spirit out there. And I, I, wanna, I wanna maybe enlighten or encourage some of you to understand money is a spiritual deal. And, and so I wanna talk about what that looks like today. What, 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 see, here's the deal. God says sow and reap. Mammon says, store and keep. God says, give and receive. Mammon says, let's cheat, steal, let's get how, where we, let, let's, let's climb our way to the top because if we work hard enough, we'll get there. And it has nothing to do with, with only how hard we work if there's not a blessing God puts upon what's going on. How many of you guys as, as kids ever came home and you, uh, you kind of, your mom said something, you kind of said something to her back, sarcastic? And your mom said, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. It was the, you know, and I didn't understand what that meant until I had kids, because there's like, you ever, you ever like, the, the spirit behind what they said was wrong? And there's times, I want to talk today about the spirit behind our finances. There is a spiritual deal going on. And, and, and so money has a spirit. And, and I want to talk about that today. I want to look at, you, you know, um, in fact, there, there was a, a recent book that was written out there called D D The Day America Told the Truth. And they interviewed uh, uh, a segment of the Americans. I think a thousand plus people were interviewed and they were asked the question, if you were given $10 million, what would you do? 25% of those surveyed would say they would abandon their whole family for $10 million. Don't tell me there's not a spirit behind that. I mean, abandon your family for $10 million? You, you, you can't pay me. You, you, my, my, my family's worth way more than $10 million to me. Uh, the second thing this survey said, 23% would become a prostitute for a week. Now you're like, like that's crazy. There are people who don't have a spiritual, they're not, they're not alert to what God is doing in their hearts and lives. And they would look and go, are you kidding me? $10 million to become a prostitute? Are you? But 23% but of those surveyed, 16% uh, would give up their American citizenship. 10% um, would withhold testimony letting a murderer go free for $10 million. Now, I don't know about you, I couldn't sleep at night. 7% uh, would kill a stranger. I've never thought about killing strangers. I've thought about killing people I know. No, I'm gonna go there. Sorry. For no money. No, I'm joking, right? I'm joking, right? We've all thought those thoughts like, well, you know, uh, there's 3%. Uh, 3% would put their children up for adoption. 
Uh, you know, I'll adopt some of those kids if you do it, all right? I'll take them. Um, they, they need to be in a different family if you do that. Um, so as I, I, with this, I, again, there's a spirit behind, it, it, money's a spiritual thing, not, and a, not just a practical thing. And there's practical tools for management, but I'll tell you right now, without this, God's blessing over the overarching thing, it doesn't matter how many practical tools you have. Yeah. So here's some lies that we believe. When I say we, it's easy for us as humans of the homo sapien race, uh, as fallen people and creatures that, in God's kingdom, because of sin, it's easy for us to believe these lies. The first lie that mammon would say is having more money will make me more secure. There are some of you, if I just have more money, I'll, I'll be more secure. I mean, things will be, the future will look better, all those things. Um, but here's the reality. Proverbs says, the wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. In other words, they feel secure because they have a lot or they have all the money. That, that's what people think. But how many want to know it can be taken away like this? And how many of you ever seen a U-Haul fall in a hearse? You don't have a U-Haul fall in a hearse. When you die, it's all gone. We're not promised tomorrow, the Bible says. Tomorrow is a gift. The, the Bible says this, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. How many want to know money talks? It says, see ya. But God says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I don't know about you. I would rather have God as my source of security than finances. Anyone here? You know, I, I, you, you can never have enough, but I can, I can never have enough of God who says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. It says, so we say with confidence, say, con say confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do for me? Let the stock market crash, let my, let my 401k, let my IRAs, but I'll tell you right now, my trust is in the one who never changes. His name is Jesus. And he'll never leave me and never forsake me. But there's a lie we believe. I, I have to secure my future. And the more money I have, the more security I have, the more wealth. The second lie we believe is the, thing I, the things I own define who I am. We, we kind of get introduced to this lie early on. When it's about the clothes, if I just had the right like logo on my clothes, dad or mom, I'll feel better. And how many want to know, you know, I don't remember a single thing anyone in high school wore. I don't remember. I do remember that my parents bought me kangaroo shoes when I was in junior high and everyone else had normal shoes. But hey, we won't go there. Um, <laughs> But the things I own, that, that's why you see people fighting uh, to buy the cars and, buy, and have the clothes and have the houses and have all that stuff that, that honestly, uh, because there's this thought that if, if I own these things, it's who I am. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, then he said, beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own or what you own. Life's not measured by that. You're not defined by what you wear. I love this next verse. It says this, those who love money will never have enough. Say never have enough. In other words, your purse will have holes in it. You'll, you'll, you'll plant and never have enough harvest. There'll never be enough. How absurd to think that wealth can bring true happiness. There's this thought out there, if I own it, I'll be happy. But the reality is, is we do not get our happiness by what we have. That's why some of you should go purge that shoe closet. Okay, I didn't say that. <laughs> right? How many of you guys have ever bought clothes and they're hanging a year later with the same tag on it? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Romans says this. This is where true happiness comes from. Happy. Say happy. Happy, happy are th they whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned, happy is the person whom the Lord does not consider guilty. True happiness and joy is not in what you own, but who owns you. If you are bought by a price, honor God with your lives and with your body. He's forgiven us. That's what gives us happiness. That's what gives us joy. If you watch the NFL draft, it doesn't matter if you're the first draft pick or you're a free agent in the NFL. It doesn't matter how much they get paid. That If they don't have a relationship with Jesus, they're still at the end of the day going to go, is this what life's all about? 
There's not the force of retirement where someday they're gonna have to interact with who am I when they take away what my life has been defined by. Who are you? If you're in here or you're listening online and you don't have true happiness and you've been grasping for that and it just kind of slips through your hands, we'll talk about how you can be truly happy and truly fulfilled when someone named Jesus Christ becomes the Lord of your life and forgives you of your sins and, 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 and pardons your wrongs and you're delivered and set free. That's true happiness. We'll talk about the end of our gathering today. We'll talk about the end of this broadcast. You'll hear about that. The, th- the third lie we believe is my stuff belongs to me. And this is kind of the crux or the root of it all is when we truly believe The stuff I have belongs to me. And, and, uh, you know, we kind of, uh, uh, in America, we kind of have this entitled spirit. Like, well, I live in America. The government should send me checks. I should get things like this. I deserve it. You know, I remember a year when they cut the budget at the university, and one of my daughters, I said, don't you dare say, I lost my, I worked hard for that. I'm thinking like, yes, but you would have worked hard, Braxton, with or without the scholarship potential. Because you're his wife You didn't do it so you can get a scholarship. You did it because you wanted to do it because you, you wanted to be fulfilled because, not because someone's gonna pay you for something, but because inside you wanted to be a winner. Congratulations, UAF graduates. Got some sitting right here. But my stuff, and, 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 and you see, there's an old English word called steward. It's where you used to get stewards and stewardesses, and now there's just flight attendants. Because there were stewardesses and steward guys. Um, but, but, but a steward is an old English word that means manager. It's someone who took care of someone else's, what someone else owned. It wasn't theirs, they were stewards. And friends, look at me, we are stewards. In fact, I love what the scripture says. The scripture says, praise be to you in Chronicles. O Lord, God of our father Israel from everlasting to everlasting, yours Talk about ownership here. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness. How many want to know God owns greatness? It's not an adjective, it's who he is. He is greatness. And the power, because he's grand power, and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Everything where? In heaven and earth. It's all his. And it goes on. It's yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. You are the exalted as the head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. Look at me, friends. Look at me. All wealth and all honor and all favor, it all comes from the King of kings and the Lord of Lord, who's great and powerful. And he's, he, he's over all of it. It's all his. We are strong. Stewards of what he has. All on power, on earth and in heaven, it says this, wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Uh, uh, in, in other words, it's all yours, God. We're stewards, friends. Look at me. We're stewards. It's not ours. Well, you know, Pat, Mark, I, I worked hard for what I have. Yeah, but did you pay rent on, for the air he gave you? Well, I worked hard to build my house. Yeah, you bought the land, but who created the land that you built on, that you have a deed on? He owns it all. Everything we have is his in heaven and earth. It's, it's, it's a stewardship issue, issue, but we have this entitlement mentality in America because I want to uncomplicate money. And, and there's a powerful verse that says this, a tenth of all you produce, that's us, is the Lord's, and it's holy. So let's talk about this. I wanna talk about what does it look like to, to, to uncomplicate our money in this area called tithing. In this area, it's all his. It's a spiritual deal. Money's not a practical deal. We either serve God or we serve mammon. We serve God or we serve money or the God of this age, which is, it, it, I, 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 can, I, I keep and I can, I can store or I can give and I can sow and reap. How, what does that look like? But a tenth of all we have and produce. I, I, I love what Malachi, Malachi writes this in response um, as God downloads this through Malachi. The book of Mal, or I, 
For some of you, if you're Italian, I call Malachi, the, the Italian prophet, okay? But Malachi writes this in response because the Israelites felt like God was far away, God had turned their back on them, things were difficult. And so Malachi is writing back the response to Israel, and he says this, I, the Lord, do not change. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you've turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. In other words, they've turned. God's made decrees. They've turned from those decrees. And it says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? And he says, will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? He says, in tithes and offerings, you're under a curse, your whole nation. Why? Because finances, friends, are not just a practical thing. They are a spiritual thing. Give a tithe of your first fruits, a tithe of your produce, because it's holy. All that we have is God's. God is saying, you're wrong. And, and so he says, return to me and do what? Tithe, because there's a curse. And he goes on and says this, because you're robbing me, bring the whole tithe ten, into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Why? God says, provide for God's stuff. Don't provide only for your own house. Talk about God's house, the storehouse. So there's food in whose house? God's house. He goes on and says this, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open. In fact, he, he says, test me, try me, provoke me. See what happens. Get in my face and see if you can't. He says, test me. And test him in what? Test me in tithing. It says this, and see if I won't throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing. He doesn't say he said finances. He says what? Blessing. Anyone here want to be blessed? Yes. Three of us. <laughs> I'm sure the rest of you are like, yeah, i just sitting on pins and needles to find out. No, uh, we, we, we all want to be blessed. That there, may, that, that, that there will not be room enough to store it I will prevent, say prevent, pests from devouring your crops. In other words, you, you plant and there's not harvest. You, you, you eat and there's not enough food. You drink and there's no fill. There's pocket, there's holes in your pockets, although you earn wages. He's saying, I, I will put a blessing on that. I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops and the vines of your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed. For yours will be delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. It, this goes all the way back to Genesis when God tells Abraham, hey, it, 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 the, the nations will be blessed when they embrace you. And, and if they don't embrace you, if they, if, if, if they don't embrace you, Abraham, they're gonna be cursed. And the whole idea, it goes, you, go, you can follow the Great Commission mandate from, from, from Genesis 12 and 13 all the way through the Old Testament, the New Testament, through the Old Testament, the New Testament. There's a blessing when you live and embrace what God's principles are. And so let's just break this down. Three lies, I think, or three truths regarding, regarding tithing. This is a passage on tithing. Not the, the first truth is, the first thing people say is, it, it's, isn't tithing an Old Testament law? And I've heard that. Well, isn't, uh, I think it's an Old Testament law. Well, I, I would say Genesis chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning, what? God. Look at me. In the beginning, God. At True North, we try, the, the first week of the year, we do a week of prayer and fasting because we want to give the first of our year to God. When I wake up in the morning, I give the first part of my day to him. I get up and I spend some time in prayer. I get to spend some time in the word. I drink some of that sacred juice called coffee. And all those in favor say aye. No. Um, and, 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 and so, but in the beginning, God, I, I give my first of my year to God. I give the first of my day to God. I give the first of my week to God by attending church and worship with other people because I need other people in community. And then I give the first of my month, I tithe, because there's a principle. In the, fir, the, fir, the tenth of all produce, you give to God because it's holy. In the beginning, the first thing you do, you can say, well, it's Old Testament, New Testament. I, no, if God owns it all, if it's the beginning of the month, I give him what is his. If it's the beginning of the day, I give him what is his. If the beginning of the year, I give him what is his. It, it, it's a principle. Tithing, tithing communicates one thing. Um, tithing, tithing communicates that I've put God first. I, I love what it says here 
In Deuteronomy, the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God in first place in your life. That's what tithing does. God, I'm putting you in first place. Nothing else trumps you. I put you in first place. Um, uh, the, the, second, the second truth is tithing communicates that God is first. Um, the, the, the second thought here is I can't afford to tithe. I've heard people, I can't afford to tithe. I, I would say you can't afford not to. He says, test me in this and see if I don't pour open the floodgates of heaven on your finances. See, test me in this. Uh, tithing, friends, is a test of your faith. Um, in fact, I read this. I, I, we're, we're, we're working with a consultant on, you know, we're, we're doing a capital initiative, uh, uh, a generosity initiative to, uh, uh, to, to raise finances and, and to build a building. Uh, to reach, actually not to build a building, uh, it, we... We don't need a building. It's just that buildings are kind of needed in the wintertime in Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, but I'm, I'm reading this book from Andy Stanley. Some of you have heard him. Pastor Andy, pastor of a great church in a small church of 20,000 people in Atlanta. Um, it says, when you begin to view your wealth and money from God's perspective, you'll see that the thing to fear isn't giving away too much, but sowing too little. The thing to fear is not giving too much, it's sowing too little. And I think, well, I, I don't know if I can afford to tithe. I would say, I don't know if you can afford not to. You wanna uncomplicate your money, then bring money under God's umbrella of blessing. And, and the, uh, uh, the third thought is the church doesn't need my money. God says, you know, bring to the storehouse so the storehouse can be full. Friends, you know, and here's the great news about True North Church. We, we have a $3.7 million mortgage payment we didn't have last January. We closed in our first piece of property on College Road the end of December. Our first mortgage payment was in January. Um, right now, uh, as of my last board meeting, our four, you know, we're four months into the new year the end, you know, with, a, with a bookkeeping. Uh, we're, we're, uh, uh, we only had $8,000 less at the end of those four months we had $80,000, $88,000 last year at the end of four months in the black. We were $80,000 this year with a $3.7 million mortgage payment, which tells us we're way ahead of where we were last year. We're 17% ahead on giving this year than last year. And I share that. Why? This church has been blessed because people say yes to partnering. But there are some of you that haven't partnered yet, and you don't understand the blessing God has for you. You don't do it. Here's the thing. We don't need your money. You're like, the church doesn't need your money? God would like to bless you and allow the church to have more than a need for the projects they have, the missions initiatives. We, we, he, you know, we, I gotta share this. We invest, uh, we love a ministry called Chi Alpha in town. Yeah. Chi Alpha is on the college campus. Yeah. And in February... Uh, we made some mission pledge. We did an initial, uh, we did a big uh, end of the year giving campaign to raise money for what we call our, lay, our kingdom builders offering. And uh, there was two projects in there. One was uh, $15,000 to help with recruiting to get uh, teachers to come up and go to villages, which Chi Alpha is doing an incredible job uh, in that. There, there's a village we're actually gonna take off. There, there's four teachers going to a village up the Kuskokwim River next year uh, to teach for three years and to help plant a church. And every year they want to go village by village by village and add more teachers and more teachers and more teachers until we can take, we, can, we, we won't stand up and say there's 100 villages with no churches. But uh, in, in, Jan in February, we sent the check for $25,000 for two projects with Chi Alpha. That's a lot of money. And someone, our business administrator reminded me, Mark, remember, you know, we sent a $25,000 check off. Do you realize someone dropped the $25,000 check in the offering plate in February? Now, I just say that to say, the church can't outgive God. We're not a storehouse to keep, we're a storehouse to give. It's not ours. We, we see it as how do we steward God's resources, but when you steward God's resources, I'll tell you right now, there's no way we can outgive God. But I'll tell you right now, we will help funnel what God has to reach our, our city, our state, and the globe. I share that because uh, in, in a few months, and, and, and I gotta close quickly, but in a few months, we're launching the campus on College Road. And Pastor Matt and Jen Gerald, who are on staff here, um, they're still on staff. They're just gonna go help plant that campus over there. Uh, and we're hoping, it's, like I said, to send 100 of you over there to help plant it. Um, uh, we're paying for that project with cash. 
But I'm believing this. There's a principle. Uh, in fact, I told Pastor Bo, uh, who, who his, again, his wife is going to be our, super, our superintendent for the next year. And, and he says, Mark, he said, are you ready? Because if you send 100 people out the doors, you're going to grow by 200 people because that's what happens. You can't, you don't sow without reaping. It's a principle. And, and, and so, now, now with that thought, uh, maybe you're here and you're saying, Mark, um, I, I don't get this whole God thing. It doesn't make sense to me. And maybe it doesn't make sense to you because you've never made a commitment to serve Jesus. You've thought, Mark, I need, I, you, I need my money because I, that, that's what keeps my security and my hope and my happiness. No, your happiness and joy does not come from your money. It comes from a relationship with Jesus. If you're here today and, or you're listening online and you're far from God, you have no relationship with Jesus, it's not your resources that you have around you that make you secure and help, hopeful. It's, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you, you're outside of a relationship with Jesus, you're far from God. We always say at True North, it's as easy as A, B, C, A, admit you, you, you've sinned. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. B, believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And C, confess Jesus as the Lord of your life and, and make him your life leader. If you've never done that, admit, believe, and confess, I'd like to pray with you right now. Whether you're online or in, in, in auditorium, would you bow your heads with me right now and pray? If you've never prayed that prayer, but today you wanna, you wanna make your life right with Jesus, you, you want to ask him to forgive you for sin. Just pray this prayer silently as I pray it out loud. Dear Jesus, today I admit I've sinned, but I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I confess my sins to you, and today I, I, I confess you as the Lord of my life, as my Savior and my life leader. Help me serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer for the first time, I want to say congratulations. The Bible says... There's more rejoice in heaven when one person prays that prayer than 99 people have already prayed it. Would you give it up for those who prayed it maybe for the first time? What a fantastic service. If you would like to respond to something in today's message or receive prayer, text ABC to the number on the bottom of your screen and someone will reach out to you soon. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media accounts to stay up to date with True North Church.